baseballed it. Let me try cutting with this in case it's sharper. I don't expect this to work, but... Skills. Hello everybody, Jardine here. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Chenis Oniuri, specifically the special edition Kuroha version made for last year's Christmas season. On the top we have the Ronin Dojo Pro Number no. 10, a Kokatana. In the middle is a standard Shirasaya, a 40 inch Katana. And on the bottom we have the Oniuri. And it's very clear that out of these, the Oniuri has the most presence. And that's very intentional. It's made to be not a trick weapon, but an, a kind of deceitful weapon. It is a Kokatana with an extra long handle housed in a normal length Saya. So it has a 14 inch handle, a 23 inch blade, and a 30 inch Saya or so. So before I zoom out and give you the standard review of all those specs, here's the sword bag. I would, normally wouldn't bring up a sword bag. However, I was very happy. This is an extra thick cloth on it. And the strings used to tie it, you actually get two on it and they're made of cotton. That's very nice to me. I can actually, you know, tie it up in certain ways. And I thought that was really cool. And one final thing, uh, one notice the textured Saya. This is absolutely awesome to me. I understand if people like the uh, polished lacquer Saya's that shine, but in this case, you don't get any hand marks on it. It feels great in the hand. And one thing I always wanted on a sword, but it's, you know, kind of an obscure detail, is that's a normal Saga there. It's a normal amount. I always wanted, you know, as a sort of ninjutsu guy, to have an extra long Saga and look at that. I mean, that is so much cord that with many of the techniques in the Bonsen Shukai, there are a few uh, Sageo things, and this is absolutely perfect for them. You could tie up a shelter, your kimono, uh, you can tie your swords together, anything. This is an awesome little detail, and it's something I appreciate. Anyway, let me zoom out and let, you sh uh, let me show you the full blade. So here you can see the overall sword. 14-inch uh, handle again, 23-inch blade. So a short sword blade on an extra long handle. Some katanas did have a 14-inch handle, but that's typically what you see on O katanas. And of course, the full-length saya, giving the illusion of it being a large to standard sword. So, here you can see. I've coated the blade with quite a bit of oil, so that's why it has that sheen on it. It has the fuller, meaning this one is 2 pounds, 8 ounces. And it gives you a very nice tachikaze, or the uh, whistle when you swing it. Sorry for the shadows. You can see there is a fake hamon over the whole thing. It's not very obnoxious, but as most people agreed, sorry, I couldn't get the focus, but as most people agreed, um, they would rather have no hamon over a fake one. But that's not an issue with me. I'm going to be doing a little bit of work on it. I'm thinking about giving this blade a very light gun blue to give it a bit of a grayer, uh, worn look. Here you can see the suga. Again, sorry if I can't get this to focus that well, but it is a black uh, cotton. It, it kind of looks blue in this light, but that is a black cotton ito with black same, rice skin. The manuki is very cool. It is some form of demon. It has two pins. The right one is wooden, and the left one is actually brass, which is a neat little detail. The cap is textured. I do not believe it's iron, neither is the fuchi Chenis, Paul Chen of Chenis, uh, not Hanwei, admits that, you know, the fittings aren't the strong points of the swords. Their main uh, focus is making budget 9260 spring steel blades, which is something I'm totally down with. Uh, this has a little snap back and forth, but it's not moving now, so I'm not worried about it. The Habaki is brass, and the Suba, I do believe, is ironing, and this is the one you get with the special edition. The Sander Oniuri has a different guard. This one, if I could get this on is rather thick and it has a really cool textured look on it um like it has some random marks here and there but overall it's very smooth it does not cut my thumb or hurt my hand 
My one issue, as you can see right here, is he used copper for the Seppa. Um, that's an interesting design choice. It makes it look cool when it's uh, sheathed. However, I'm not down with that. I kind of wish he used brass to match the Habaki. It just looks off to me there. So what I'm going to try to do is use a very light amount of gun blue on it, try to darken it a bit, and make it stand out a bit less. Um, you know, not a deal breaker, but I just thought that was a very uh, interesting choice by him. And again, the Saya, one more time, let me actually bring this up. The textured look is great on it. Uh, it feels good in the hand. This Saya is a breath of fresh air for me, as most of the Saya's I've owned recently were rather light and flimsy. The Ronin wasn't flimsy, but it was much lighter than I thought. Yet this is a very meaty Saya. It does not have horn as far as I know uh, for the fittings, but it does have some sort of cap on it, if you can see. It's kind of hard with the textured look over it. But again, very thick, sturdy Saya. You could use that as a weapon or as a tool, and you can put something in the end of it. But yeah, that's it for the specs. I'm doing this video now before I sharpen it and mar the edge up. It did not come paper cutting sharp out of the box. In fact, let me switch to that now. All right, here's the paper test out of the box. Yeah, um, I was rather disappointed because on the SBG review and some other people, they said this sword was like razor sharp. Uh, this might be because I got the Kuroha version. but it is not sharp out of the box. So you should be impressed with the fact that I cut anything when I was out there doing the bottles first, because it, oh, that was a good one, but it really does not have the edge I was expecting of it. Very spotty. Oh yeah, one last thing, let me cut to the sword box before I forget, it did come with a nice sword box. Here is the sword box it came in. Very elegant design. I really enjoy it. The inside is what you expect from these sword boxes. Uh, foam made to fit the sword, and this uh, pseudo like silk-ish covering throughout. Works very well. All right, everybody. Here are my first cuts with the sharpened Oniyuri. Let's see what I can do. uneven footing. At least I caught him. Okay, good. I didn't fully baseball bat that first one. I did. Sluice it. Dang it. At the very least, while I'm lobbing a lot of these, I'm cutting them, which is more than I was doing when I was sucking with the Ronin. So again, I'm cutting into these, um, I'm just not doing it finely enough. Thank <laughs> you. 
See, I cut low on that and I hit the log. Fortunately, spring steel. That kind of thing is why I want to build a cutting stand, uh, especially for my uh, my EI, my bad jutsu practice. So and stuff like that, you know, that's a fine movement. It's easy to hit that kind of thing. Lobbed. As far as thrusting goes, this thing has a very fine tip, so it works just fine. Nothing. Yeah, works great for that. Thank you for watching. That is the last bottle I have. Now let's get inside so I can give the final review. As you saw, this cut very well. It didn't have the fine edge of the Ronin on the top half, but I can work on that. Overall, great thing. Uh, swung well, do a variety of cuts with it with different grips. Everything seemed to work. All right, so I've sharpened the sword. I've sharpened myself with my new trench coat and this awesome Neo shirt my bud got me for Christmas. So here's the actual review. I. For one, I could not perfectly touch up the edge, but I think I did a decent job. I would say that's much better. Um, so I'll touch it up again whenever it gets too dull, but I think this is a... Well, that's bad, but I think that it's overall good sharpness for what I'm doing. Sometimes it slices. Okay, maybe I should sharpen it more, but nevertheless, this is how sharp I'll be doing the next set of cuts with, so, or I think they played right before this, so, um, this is my actual review portion. What do I think of the Oniari? Well, for one, I am incredibly biased. Here, let me move away from the light real quick. For one, I am incredibly biased because as soon as I picked this up, I fell in love. Um, the handle feels absolutely fantastic. It has an extra thick Nakago tang inside. You can see that on their website, what I mean. But it extends basically the entire way and it's really wide. So, the cotton feels good. The balance is only about 2.5 inches up. So, very close to the Suba. And it makes it feel like... The sword just listens to what you want it to do. Um, and yet it has enough of a presence that it really, you know, it it can cut, and yet it feels like you're in perfect control, and that is assuming, of course, you're holding it like I do, which is essentially the widest grip possible. You have maximum leverage, you can move it however you want, it swings perfectly. I'm going to say, of course, a negative is that it came very dull. Uh, this is, you know, it's duller than the budget stores I have, and certainly from that Ronin. But besides that, the blade also, it doesn't have the best finish in the world. It looks pretty good right now, you know, I just oiled it up a little, but uh, overall the blade is not the strong point looks wise. Uh, over, I do love though the Suba, the Fuchi, the Cat, the Ido, everything, overall I think it's a very stylish looking sword, and it's certainly one that despite feeling short, uh, you don't feel like it's much shorter than a katana, especially when you can just move your hand down through the thick Nakago, and this feels pretty standard, you know, I don't feel like I'm ruining my technique or anything like that. So, overall, I mean, I've got to, I've got to give tennis props for this. I'm sure the normal Oniuri is great, if not better, maybe that one actually does come sharp, but this is just a really nice sword. I thought it was going to feel thinner, maybe too light, in fact, I wanted a no fuller version, a no, a no he, uh, but he wouldn't make one because these were made like a year ago. 
The Kasaki, before I forget, has a thinner profile in this Ka Kuroha version, which again, just another plus for me. I think the overall geometry is really cool. It has a nice taper to it, a nice grind on it, which, you know, I slightly ruined by whetstoning, but what can I do? So that's really it. I'm not going to blabber on too much longer. I just, I love this sword. I'm kind of biased. The fittings aren't the tightest. There's gaps, you know, the seppa uh, goes over the suba holes. So it definitely doesn't have the strength of the Ronin in terms of just quality control, but this sword just feels like it was made for me. Uh, everything I do with it feels fine. And I would say if you like Kokotanas, or if you're a ninjutsu kind of guy, pick it up. I mean, if you're cool with a longer handle, then absolutely go for it. This is definitely more of a slicer than a chopper, although again, the handle means that you can choose that. Like, if you want, you can just choke down and really whack or pull your hands together and use all the force. It can do whatever you want. And it's 92 spring steel, which I'm not going to be abusing because I love this thing and it's limited edition. But, you know, I assume you can bend it as much as you want. You can watch all the videos they make on it. That's really it. I've gone on quite long enough. These reviews are getting pretty long. I'm trying to move my channel away from reviews and more towards like my uh, personalized training, but I can't not give a review for such an awesome item and something that hopefully people want to see. Well, that's really it. Hope you guys enjoyed the cuts I did and you all have a wonderful day.